Hey everybody, welcome back. Chad with Patriot Astro. The other day I published a video where I shared some of my NINA sequences that you can download from my website and import into your own NINA installation. If you haven't seen this yet, it looks like this thumbnail here on screen and I'll make sure to put the link to the video in the comments. If you want more videos like this, like and subscribe and share with others and I'll make sure that I keep making this content and make it as fresh as possible. As a result of publishing those videos, I did have a couple questions, and one common question was, what do I do if I'm using a filter drawer or don't have an automatic electronic filter wheel? Well, good news. Within Nina, we have options to deal with this. So what I'm gonna show you right now is a device that you can attach within Nina that is a dummy device. It's a device that doesn't really exist, but it tricks Nina into thinking that there's a filter wheel attached, which allows you to go make the filter changes necessary whenever prompted. When I show you the basics of how this functions and how to configure it, I'll then go back and also show you how to configure offsets with this type of functionality. Okay, so let's just jump right in. Uh, I'm gonna set a new profile. So I'll go ahead and create one and I'll load it. And then I'm gonna go ahead and give it a name. I'll set my language. I'll set the Sky Atlas folder. I'll also set a custom horizon file, even though it's not really necessary for this demo. And this is really just a dummy profile. So I'm not gonna set the lat launch, but I will set a color here. So it's a little bit easier to see on the screen. Although that may be arguable. Now I'm gonna go set up some other parameters here. I'm just gonna say I'm using my uh, C8 SCT at, uh, 1280 millimeters. I'm using a reducer. So I'm gonna say the focal ratio is 6.3. Notice I don't have any filter wheel definitions in the upper right. I'll go ahead to the autofocuser in this profile and I'll set some of the parameters similar to my typical C8 definition in my other Nina instances with a step size and overshoot. Notice I don't have any filter information at the bottom again. So under imaging's nothing all that important here. I'll go into plate solving. Notice I'm using ASTAP or ASTAP, however you want to pronounce it, and that there's no filter definition available. It just says current. So let's go into equipment. I'm gonna go ahead and connect a dummy camera, um, a simulator. So again, this is not connected to any of my equipment. I really just want to use this for demo purposes. So I'm just gonna connect a dummy camera here, the simulator. I'm gonna connect a simulator as a focuser. And you can see the definition here on the simulator is that there is a focus position ready. I'm gonna set up a simulated telescope and it will try to pull in some parameters that were already here. So I'll just import those into Nina for some latitude and longitude information. And I'm not gonna use a guider. And again, some of this is overkill, but I, I wanna make sure I can run through a basic test sequence to show you what some of this looks like. So now if I go into the imaging tab, again, I don't have any filter definitions here, right? So um, I go ahead and, and click and I'll just see that there's just the current filter is the only thing available. So what can I do? Well, go into options and under equipment, notice this upper right corner here says filter wheel. You can add filters here, even if you don't have an electronic filter wheel. So I can define these and say position one is empty. Position two, let's just say is L extreme. And in position three, we'll say it's a duo filter. So maybe this is an example for a one shot color user that has uh, either a manual filter wheel or more likely a filter drawer. So now under autofocus, notice these objects show up. And this will be interesting later when we talk a little bit about how you can even apply this to focus offsets. So the next thing we want to do is just go into imaging and we can see that because we've defined this in Nina, we actually have these options here. Now we don't have a filter wheel connected, but we do have some filter definitions. So if I try to take a picture with L extreme, you know, it'll say, okay, fine, go ahead. But it's not going to ask me to change anything or it's not going to try to change anything because there is no filter wheel attached. So what if we go into the advanced sequencer? So the same thing here, if I go into the advanced sequencer and I'm just gonna make a simple sequence. This is not a complete sequence, don't use this. But if I go in here and just drop a sequential instruction set and then I grab a smart exposure. Now, within the smart exposure, I'll just set dithering to zero because there's no guider attached. And I'm gonna duplicate this out a couple times, right? Three times. So I basically have two and we'll just say one second images for each. And I'm gonna go ahead and set my filter. So it says current, but I can change it now. So I'll say empty, 
L Extreme, and then Duo. Now, what will happen if I run this? Well, it'll run just fine. Again, there's no filter wheel attached. It'll complain and say the filter wheel's not connected. But yeah, let's go run it. And what'll happen is it'll just run through and it'll never try to change a filter because it doesn't have a way to do it. So, okay, well, it ran through, it took pictures, but it didn't really help me out. So really, I just ended up with six one second images of whatever happened to be attached. So here's where we can get creative with something you may not be familiar with. If we go back to equipment and we go under filter wheel, Nina has a manual filter wheel device you can attach. This is sort of a dummy filter wheel or a human filter wheel. So as soon as it's connected, in the upper right, you'll notice that empty is highlighted. That means it believes, or Nina believes, that empty is the filter that's attached. What if I try to change that, right? So what if I go and say, well, let's change it to L Extreme and click change. When I do this, because this device is connected, it's going to prompt me. Nina knows that I have some sort of manual filter wheel or filter device attached, and it will prompt me and say, it's time to change to the L Extreme. Now I have to manually go do that either on my manual filter wheel or on my filter drawer. And then when I come back to Nina, I click OK and it will proceed. So let's go back to the imaging tab and let's take a look at the focuser here. And we'll make sure we have that enabled for later. So now notice that the active filter is the L Extreme. And in the upper right hand corner, I'm going to take a one second duo exposure. So as soon as I try to do that, it will prompt me and say, wait a minute, you need to go change the filter. I'll do it. I'll click OK. It will go ahead and image. Notice now the system is aware of the fact that we're connected to the Duo filter. So what if I go back into my advanced sequence? Well, I'm currently on the Duo filter, so when I try to run this, the first images are for the empty filter. It's gonna prompt me to make the change. I make the change, I come back, click OK, and then I can take the images automatically. And again, this is going to, at every step of the process, Anytime a new filter is defined, it will understand that someone needs to make a change manually. Now, another byproduct of this is that I have filters that have been modified by a user using the manual filter wheel, and Nina is aware of that. So if I go back into my options in my imaging definition, I can now place that information into the filter variable. And if I go look at the data that was just saved, you'll notice that in the folder, the first series where I didn't have the manual filter wheel attached, didn't have filter information. Now that I have the manual filter wheel attached, it is populating that variable. So just another benefit, when you come into your data the next day, you'll know exactly what information was saved from what filter. So what else can we do with the manual filter wheel attached? Well, we can also use focus offsets. And focus offsets, if you watch my previous video, are a way for the system to automatically, when I change a filter, change the focus position. So I don't need to run through an autofocus cycle. So let's say that I've gathered that information for these manual filters. Let's say my empty filter was position zero, and then everything is relative to that. So my L Extreme was plus 500, and my Duo filter was minus 500 focus positions away from the empty filter. So now that they're defined in the table, I can go ahead and enable filter offsets within Nina. Notice as soon as I do that, the Set Autofocus Filter button becomes available, and I can choose which of these three filters I want to force Nina to always use for every autofocus run moving forward. In this case, I've chosen the L Extreme filter. Anytime an autofocus needs to happen, it's going to force me to use the L Extreme filter. Now, this is not a requirement, but it is something you can set up should you choose to do so. So now we'll come back here, and I'm gonna reset this sequence. And I'm going to go ahead and drop in an autofocus on HFR change like you would in a typical sequence, and this would be a trigger. So if HFR ever changes throughout the night, a certain amount based on these parameters, it will prompt me to do an autofocus run. So let's remember that we're using offsets and that the current active filter is duo. And look at the position at the top of the screen. We're currently at 31337. And look at the bottom. Pay attention down here. When I go ahead and change this to L Extreme and click the button, 
notice that it's changing my focus or location right now. So it immediately is changing my focus location based on the fact that I've enabled offsets. It's also prompted me to change the filter. I go and change the filter, and then I come back and click OK. And again, as I change filters throughout the evening, notice that it immediately applies the focus offset. And you can see that both at the top left of the screen and at the bottom left as it occurs. So again, dynamically, if I try to take an image, I'm currently on the duo filter. I come up here and say, I wanna take an empty slot image. I click it, it changes based on the offset table, tells me to go to my telescope and make the change. I make the filter change, I come back, I click OK, and it takes the image or series of images depending on where you are within Nina. So how would this work within the sequencer? Exactly the same. Again, pay attention at the bottom of the screen. As soon as we start it, because it's going to a new filter, it applies the focus or offset, tells me to make the filter change. I go to my telescope, I do that, I come back, click OK, it takes the images. When it moves on to an instruction that forces another filter change, it again applies the offset immediately, requests I make the change, I go manually make the change, come back, and click OK. And again, this is going to happen all evening long automatically. Well, hopefully you found this video as helpful as some of my others. If you have any questions or topics you want covered, reach out and let me know. Thanks for watching and clear skies.